Thank you for hopping on. Those of you who hop on and join us live, I thoroughly appreciate it because I love seeing the faces. Although I only have said this morning, is anybody else awake and ready to show their shiny, smiling face? Hi, Shar. Good morning. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> um, I love seeing people's faces. It just, you know, it does something. You don't feel like you're talking to a brick wall. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Uh, all back home and safe and sound after that long travel day yesterday. Eh? I am still recovering. So if I sound a little raspy or like I have something going on here, it's not that. I just had a very exciting weekend where I was yelling a lot and talking a lot. And I have, I, I think I need to drink more tea, Sydney. <laughs> I, I think I have figured out that when I overexert my voice and talk for days on end and do a lot of yelling, my my, I lose my voice. Yesterday, it was almost gone. I think some sleep last night helped uh, in my own comfy bed. And we are back off and running for this Monday morning. So I uh, started, I, I, I um, shared a book with you guys last week. Um, it's Eric Thomas's new book. Uh, why the name of it's drawing a blank to my mouth right now. Um, it's absolutely uh UOU, I think is what it is. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. And, and one of his chapters in there is totally about finding your superpower. And then I dug a little bit deeper this morning. It's like, you can take this assessment by him, but it is, it costs money. It's like $147. I'm half tempted, but I don't know if that's a good use of my money right now. So instead of that, for now, uh, we're going to talk about that this morning and maybe give you some uh, some things that you can work on to figure out what your superpower is. So you know, all too often, and I'll have to say that when I do, uh, I do a lot of these uh, success strategy Zooms, recordings, lives on leadership type principles and uh, strategy training for network marketers. And sometimes we're always picking apart the bad, right? Like sometimes we're always taking a look inside at all the things we're doing wrong because we're trying to fix them, right? Like we're trying to become better leaders, become better humans, become better moms, become better dads, become better bosses, become better leaders and team builders and all of those things. So we're always looking at things that we can improve on. And in that process, sometimes I think we lose sight of the things that we are already really, really good at that we might be able to uh, capitalize, monetize, uh, utilize in our teams to help other people uh, become superhumans. So I really, when I when I read, I shouldn't say read because I physically did not read his book. I love to listen to audibles because um, I can multitask a little bit more and I can do it on the go. I don't have to worry about having the book in my hand all the time. So um, when I was listening to this chapter, I was like, man, I'm talking about that next week. I like already had this subject picked out before last week's Zoom even started. Um, and I reviewed it a couple of times because I wanted to make sure that I drove some of those points home for you guys. So I want to talk, I want to take a walk down that, that road today. We're going to look, we're going to put our blinders on and com com completely and totally uh, go down our own lane for the next seven days. I want you to spend some time doing this because I don't want you to think this is like, oh, well, on the Zoom for 30 minutes, I thought about what my superpower was and I got it all figured out. Because I think it takes a little bit of reflection and this kind of ties back into a few weeks ago when I talked about the 12 hour walk and going on that and what I was trying to accomplish with that 12 hour walk and I didn't even realize it was kind of tapping into inside here. We got to hear from some unbelievable speakers this past weekend and man, I like I, I was an emotional wreck on the inside and a little bit on the outside yesterday morning, <laughs> or not yesterday morning, uh, my days are so screwed up, Saturday morning, um, when we got to hear from this speaker that I I had never even heard of before, and I'll share more about her in the coming weeks, um, but it got me, oh, this journey kind of got me taking a look inside, and I had the greatest conversation, I know Joey's probably not able to be on here because he's at, um, you know, those those jobs that we all like just love going to those nine to fivers. Um, but I had an amazing conversation with him about this exact topic. Um, just kind of like what we had been through over the last couple of years and in his story, completely different than not mine, but we both resonated on the same point of, you know, some things, and this is what the speaker talked about on, on Saturday afternoon, 
sometimes we go through things in life that we start, maybe we've done something really good. Like Joey was talking about how he grew this congregation of, you know, people at his church from X amount to X amount over a couple of years, doing things the way he knew in his heart and in his soul that he could do to grow this church. And he did a really good job at it. And then, and, and I, I had the same story. Like I worked and Sydney and I have talked about this a bunch of times. I worked really hard at one of my network marketing businesses uh, over the course of a number of years doing things. And I won't say like my way is the highway, not that person. I love to learn 24 seven, but there's something we did right. Cause we grew in momentum and built a massive team and went from zero to $1.5 million in sales per month. Not because we didn't know what we were doing, right? Like we knew what we were doing. And then you start, you get to that point and you start to let all these voices in. You start to let all these other people talk about all of your weaknesses rather than your superpowers. You start to let people chit chat over here and chit chat over here. And you take those things home and you start questioning whether you're doing things right. Because everyone has a different opinion about how you should be doing those things, handling those things, building those things, maintaining those things. And you start to let those voices in and they start to just decay at your brain. Those people haven't done what you did. They didn't have that superpower. They didn't build that congregation. They didn't build that team. They didn't get that team to that, that height. So why do those opinions of they, they matter more than the one of you? Because your superpowers are what got you there. So if you can reflect on some things that you've done in the past that you know you did really well, and then maybe you stop doing those things or um, some things fell apart or life got in the way and some things changed. I want you to go back to that time when you were just absolutely crushing it and dominating whatever that task or thing was that you were trying to do and go back and try to write some of those things down that you you believe you were doing right at that time. And then maybe you let some other outside influences and voices get in your head. Okay. So I, I loved that conversation with him because it was like when he said that uh, it really resonated with me. And I thought, you know what? I'm not letting those voices do that to me this time. I am really good at a few things. Not everything, but I am really good at a few things. And I am a tough leader. I am a tough coach. But you know what? That got a team to $1.5 million in sales per month. It's when I became a, a weaker leader and started listening to a lot of opinions of other people about how I should do things and how I needed to be and how my personality needed to be is when we started slipping from that. Now, did I learn a lot of lessons in that run? Absolutely. Were there some things I could have done differently? Absolutely. I will not make the same mistakes twice. But I also think that we need to hone into what our superpowers are because that's what's going to get us to the great. We were all born with different things. We were all born with different qualities. We got to go pull those superpowers out of us and step on the gas on those and stop letting other people's opinions in. So here's what I'm I made some notes over here. So if you see me looking to the side, those of you who are watching this or listening to this on a recording, you might not, um, this may make no difference to you, but those of you who are watching. Um, so I want you guys to spend, like I said, like a, like a week kind of reflecting. And I went on that 12 hour walk and I had no idea that was going to be part of what because when you're in complete silence, you can't listen to the outside voices. You can't listen to anybody else's books or podcasts or the radio or whatever, Amazon music. You just have you and your thoughts. You start reflecting on a lot of things. And um, so, you know, I'll give some tips at the end of this of kind of like what, maybe some things, some steps you can take to get to that superpower. But I really want you guys to hone in on this because once we grab that, we'll work together. We're not going anywhere, right? Let's find the superpower because we're going to start to really hone in on that and figure out what that is for each of us. And then we're going to build off of that. So when you're talking about building a network marketing business and we're utilizing a lot of social media, your superpower does not have to be, I go live really well if you don't go live really well. I'm talking about a superpower that's a little bit bigger than that, right? Right. I want you to look really deep inside and figure out what that is. So I want you to start an infinite one. Okay. So when I was with Danelle in Mexico in uh, July and I was spending my few days with her to start digging into some business stuff we were going to work on, 
one thing she made me do is go back to my room that night and I had to write down a list. Now this is all coming full circle. I did not even realize what she was trying to get me to do. You, I had to go and write down a hundred things that night before the next morning. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start writing them out and you have to think about you, it gets difficult because we're so used to picking apart the bad. So I want you guys to do that this week. I won't say do it by tomorrow. I mean, if you're like a super power high achiever, you might want to do it by tomorrow, but I'll give you the week. I want you to go and write a list of a hundred things that you are like, you love about yourself, that you are capable of things that you're really good at that. Like, I, I want you to really focus in on those things for this week. A hundred things that you are, you are known to be really good at you. Um, you absolutely love about yourself, not things you want to do, not things that you want to achieve, not things you want to be good at, things you are already really good at, okay? I want you to write down a hundred of those things starting when we get off here. You don't have to start now, starting when we get off here. Because <laughs> um, we're going to really like start to dig into those things. Um, what are you naturally attracted to? What are some of the things, this is not the... Take the list, set this to the side. This is some other notes you can take um, just as in trying to work through and find your superpower. What are some things that you're just naturally good at? You know how some people, like you can even tell kids in their childhood, they, they start playing sports and some kids are just naturally good at sports. I can remember when Luke was um, in elementary and going into junior high and, you know, he, he, he was not like the the massive sports kid he enjoyed a couple of different sports and we did some recreational stuff and he got on some of the team soccer team and basketball team and he just tried and dabbled in a lot of different things just to get his feet wet and see and there was always those kids that were just naturally good at basketball or just really naturally good on that soccer field there's i can think of kristen scott's son not that he has not worked his little booty off for it but he is naturally good at a lot of sports. He is naturally good. So I want you to dig all the way back, not with your list. Like I said, that's something totally different. I want you to spend some time with that list, trying to figure out what you love about yourself. But what are some things even think all the way back to your childhood? Think about high school, think about college, think about your first job, think about what you do maybe in your community, for your family, for your church. What are some things that you are naturally good at? One thing I'll say about Sydney, I was thinking about this as walking through the airport yesterday because I said this about her over the course of the weekend because we were meeting a lot of new people. And I said, you know, Sydney's one of the funniest people I have ever met. And you can be funny, but there's something about quick witted humor that I think breeds in a, a, in a totally different type of intelligent person. Because while I think I'm funny, I definitely don't come up with the things like Sydney comes up with without even thinking right? That's a massive quality that she has. And that tells me people, there's only, you know, so many people in the world that are that quick witted with their humor. And you know that the intelligence level of that person has to be pretty high because their brain has to come up with those things without them even really thinking, right? So I was thinking about that yesterday and I was like, I love surrounding myself with those quick witted humorous people, because I love being funny and I'll just take all of their material, but I have to process it before I can use it. Cause I'm not that fast at it. <laughs> right. But like, I can't wait to see her on lots of stages over the coming years. Cause I know she will be. And that quick witted humor is going to serve her so well. Those are the things that if I was coaching Sydney, I would be saying, Sydney, you need to hone in on that skill because it's not something that most people have. It's a superpower, right? Um, I, I want you to think about those things, okay? So um, wh why are people naturally attracted to you? What is it about you that you believe people like being around? Why do people call you up and invite you to lunch or breakfast, Kelly Bollinger? Why do people want to be around you, right? Is it your purple hair? Is it because you stand out? <laughs> like, what is it about you that people want to be around? And don't, if you're sitting back there going, my friends never call me, they don't ever want to hang out with me. 
<laughs> don't be getting down on yourself. Okay. Because there's other things in your life that make you have superpowers. Okay. It might not be that it might be something completely different. Um, so this is about finding your superpower not finding the, the things that you don't like about yourself. Um, what could it look like if you honed in on that superpower? And I'll go back because Sydney's is a good example. It's just ever present in my mind right now. But what kind of doors could that open for her? I know where she wants to go. What kind of doors could honing in on that superpower open for her? And I want you to make a list of those things. Think about where you're going. And if you really honed in on that, I cannot, Aaron Jarrell, you are not on the screen today and I know why, but I feel like I'm talking to you today because girlfriend, we had a conversation, uh, maybe a month ago and Aaron, I hope don't kill me for sharing this, please. I'm going to ask permission kind of, but like not because you really aren't getting a say right now. She, we had this conversation and she's like, I know that I was meant, she's another one of those quick humor persons. See how I like to surround myself with that. She's like, I know I was meant for massive, huge things like massive. She goes, I know I am meant to be on big stages and motivate the masses and just absolutely make people feel amazing. And when they walk out of that room, they are going to feel like they are on fire and they can, they can do anything. And I was like, there's a start. And she's like, I know, but I have no idea what I'm, why I'm up there or what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> okay. There is a superpower there because most people think about getting up on a stage and, 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 and there's a statistic that most people would rather like jump off of a tall building to their death than get up on a stage and speak. Okay. So there's a superpower there, Mrs. Jarrell, that you need to tap into because most people don't want to do that. Okay. You already got step one, a massive step one accomplished. So we need to start studying that. And I'm going to hold you accountable to that. Um, I, it makes me think about this past weekend. I had, uh, I was told like a week before we were going that I had 30 minutes on stage that I was going to be presenting and I was not prepared for that. And I, I literally didn't even have a week because we were going to be trapped. We were going in early. So I really needed to get what I was talking about, all the slides done and everything in like three days and practice and get it done in like three days because I had to leave. And I was like, man, I like a little more time than that. <laughs> so leading up to me hopping on that stage, I know what my body does. And Aaron Jarrell, if you've already conquered this part, man, I want that superpower skill so badly because when I go to get up there, my heart, I'm not scared to get up there. I'm scared about what my body's going to do. My heart starts pounding. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's not even about screwing up or messing up. That doesn't make me nervous. It's just the thought of getting up there and being in front of all those people. And it, it has not like, I know I'm prepared. I know I will say the right things. And even if I didn't, I don't really care that much. Like, people know you're going to, you're not a perfect human. It's just what my body does when I go to get on that stage. And I hate that part because it takes me the first like three minutes just to calm down. So Aaron, if you've already got that mastered, we've got to get you on stages. Okay. Because that is a super power. Do you see where I'm going with this? You guys, I want you guys to really, yes, I agree with you, Sherry. I listened to a podcast last week where he interviewed Dane Cook and Dane Cook said you really, because he suffers from ang some anxiety and he's like, I had to start figuring out what was actually anxiety and what was actually fear versus what was excitement for what I was going to do. And so me getting on the stage this time, I think that was my, well, listen, I've got up in front of hundreds of people and spoke for eight hours at a time. I know I can do it. It depends on who the audience is for my comfortability. There's something about walking upstairs and getting onto a platform for me with light shining on you and cameras on. If it doesn't have that, I'm usually a lot more comfortable. I don't know why, <laughs> you know, who knows? Um, so yeah, all of those things kind of piled together, but excitement versus anxiousness is, is two totally different things. I agree with you. Um, okay. So what kind of doors could it open? Um, and then I really, after you get, you know, this list of hundred things written down and we start honing in on some things that you really like about yourself, I want you to think about what you can do. Put this as your like step number four. I don't care. I want you to start figuring out 
some things that you can do every single day to advance that skill set. Aaron, you about to get on some stages. If I have to find speaking events for you, I'm going to find them because you got to hone in on that superpower. Okay. I want you guys to start honing in on and you and, and working on that skill daily. Kristen Scott's son is not good at basketball, baseball. He plays football too, right? Football. He's not good. I mean, he is he has a natural God-given ability and talent to be good at sports, but I know the kid works hard, right? He works daily at his skill set to be good at what he's doing. The Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans, they didn't, they didn't just they're yes, do they have some naturally given ability? Yes, but they have to work really hard to maintain those skill sets and abilities into careers, right? So I want you to fake, we're gonna figure out the superpower and then we're gonna start working. We're gonna we're gonna create a plan on what you can do daily to hone in on those superpowers. And it's going to make you better and better and better and more comfortable to start tapping into those superpowers and using them to your advantage. Too often, we have those superpowers and we don't utilize them. Uh, I have been following uh, Jason Tyne and friends with him and doing stuff with him and, and talking with him for a number of years. No idea why we were going to be meshed together like that. We've now figured that out a number of years later. But one thing he has said since the day I saw him on stage the first time was about leadership and his, his, one of his missions was to find leaders and help them become empowered leaders. And I never really understood what that meant exactly, but what he's doing is finding those leaders he knows has superpowers and he's honing in on those, helping them without even telling them and he's helping people become empowered leaders. One thing over the last number of years, I know I have some skill set. I know I have superpowers. No one's really tapped into and empowered me to be better at them and given me a platform and a place to feel empowered enough to go and take those superpowers to the moon. And he's done that for me. If I can give a little bit of that back and help you guys try to do the same thing, I'm all in for that. It feels really good when someone else helps you tap into your greatness. If I can be a, this a little piece of that for other people, I want to be. So I want you to figure out what that superpower is for you. And I want you to share it with us. We have that accountability group for a reason. I want you to go in and share it. Send me a private message. Send, tell me once you figure it out, or if you need kind of help, you got a list of five or 10 things and you're just not sure, let's figure it out. Let me help you, right? Let's help each other. And if we can put you in positions to help catapult that superpower, let's help each other do that. The capability that I have may not be the same thing that Sydney has, or that Mandy Hancock has, or that Kristen Scott has, or connections that Sheila has right? We might be able to help you take your superpower and explode it, but we have to tell everybody what that is. Cause I don't know what everybody's superpower is. Okay. Um, let me get through over to my list here. Cause I don't want to, um, there's a few things I don't want to forget about during this. You might need to tap, you're going to tap into you. You might need to tune out the rest of the world. And I'll tie that back into maybe three weeks ago when I talked about my 12 hour walk, I'm not saying you have to do the 12 hour walk, but maybe you could take out three hours and go for a walk with no music, no podcast, no, nothing in your ears, no phone, no friends, and really start to think. It took me 12 hours. I think I needed all 12 of them. I don't know how often I'll do all 12 of those hours, but man, was it needed. It was absolutely needed. And I've had so many people in my inbox screenshotting me their 12-hour walk, telling me they're going to do it. People from all over. Not people I talk to every day, just people that were able to see me go live about that or talk about it and share it. And they're telling me and asking me how many, like, how many hours did you actually walk? How did you do it? It gets dark out. It's too dark in the morning when I start. I'm like, I had a plan for all of that. I will give you my plan, right? So if you need help with that, I'm here to help with that. But you might need to tune out the external world for just a little bit so that you can so you can tune into your brain and figure out what that is. And I know some of you are sitting back there in your seats going, I don't really think I have any superpowers. I'm not really good at anything. 
I'm not, I'm just not really good at anything. I will bet you, I will guarantee you, you are. We just have to figure out what it is. Um, and here, I'm going to give you some tips on trying to figure out what that is. And I feel like all my notes didn't copy over. So let me grab my phone because I kind of had a list here and it doesn't look like it's all in my notes where I keep everything because I don't want to skip these. Okay. I already gave you step one, which is start for start with an infinite list of what you do well. Okay. I want you to make that list of a hundred things that you love about yourself, things you do well, things that you kind of excel at naturally, things that you just like about yourself. We're going to talk a hundred things you like about yourself. I know it sounds easy. Once you start that list, it ain't that easy when you're like, man, I don't really like to brag on myself. Just It's a list. You're going to keep yourself. Okay. So all the things that you find just damn skippy about yourself need to go on that list. Um, list separately from this, that hundred list. That's all just about you and your, your things that you like about yourself. I want you to uh, make a separate list about your proudest accomplishments. Think about in your past things that you've done that you were super proud of, ranking up in a company, walking a stage, uh, helping a homeless person. I don't care what it is. I just want you to write down maybe like top 10 list of in your lifetime, your top 10 proudest accomplishments that you have done or had. Okay. Um, I liked this one a lot because a lot of times we will not see things about ourselves that other people see about us. So I want you to go ask some of those closest to you, not the people who pick at you. You got some family members that are always putting you down. Don't go ask this person. Go ask the people who you surround yourself with that want to see you go higher. Okay. Go ask them, people who know you well, what are my superpowers? What are the things you really like about me? What are some things that I do that make you want to be around me? Give them some time to think. Don't put people on the spot because sometimes we need a little bit for our brains to adjust. I'm actually saying that for myself because I feel like I'm going to get like 20 people in my inbox today being like, what do you like about me? <laughs> and then I'll be like, let me separate my brain here from you, from the other people. <laughs> Make sure I have a list of things for you. Um, so go ask the people who know you the best, okay? And that will help you because sometimes our brains don't want to think about all of the amazing qualities. There's some people who can do that really well. I am not necessarily one of them. Um, okay. I love this. This is right from Eric Thomas's book. What types of things could you do for hours that energize you? No, not cycling, Kristen, that will wear you out. Okay. What could you do for hours that energizes you? And then even after you're done and you've given it your all, you step away and you're like, I could go do that for another hour. When I heard that part, I was like, it's definitely training, teaching, coaching people and speaking in front of groups of people, because I could train for eight hours at our SEAL trainings. Those of you who have been to those on a Sunday for eight hours, I could go do that. And then when we were done after the eight hours, we would go and get something to drink and something to eat. We'd head home. We always called Monday morning SEAL training hangover day because it was a little intense. But after I was done with that, I'd come home and sit down on the couch and be like, man, I could do that for another two hours. I got like 10 more things I want to talk about. I know that's a superpower because there's not a lot of people that can get up and train people for eight straight hours themselves. I know it's a superpower. I need to do it again. It's how we built a massive, massive organization. And we're going to do it again because I know we have people on our team that have some superpowers that can get up in front of that room and want to get up in front of that room, right? I'm good at empowering other leaders. Jason Tyne has empowered me. I want to come empower you now. I'm going to give that back. So we're going to go do that together. Okay. So if you want to be a part of that, attach your wagon, let's go. Okay. I'm ready for it. Um, what are you naturally good at? What are you naturally attracted to? What makes your soul sing? What makes you feel high vibe? Uh, Aaron put a great quote up this morning. I told her I was ripping it off of her really fast and I was going to steal it and repost it. But it's like when you're in rooms and doing things and you feel your vibe go up, there's a big difference. I was at some things back in April and I kept feeling very anxious. And this was not fear. This was just very anxious about my situation, literally to the point of going back to our room early, feeling my husband feeling very anxious, not feeling good about things, not bad, just, just that, just feeling like I was being suffocated to this past weekend where I felt my vibe so high. I haven't felt it that high in years. I know what rooms I want to be in. I know who I want to surround myself with pay attention to that. There's a big difference when you feel your vibe go this way 
you're tapping into your superpowers. When you feel your vibe going this way, you are not. Okay. So pay attention to those things. Take notes, take mental notes, take, take physical notes. I put notes in my phone, my notes section of my phone on everything. I hear a good quote. I type it in there. I open it up on the airplane when I'm listening to a podcast. I type it in there. I put notes in there when I'm out walking and something comes up into my brain. I want to put it in there. I put it in there. Take notes on how you're feeling about things. What could it look like? What kind of doors could it open? Uh, what can you do daily to advance it? Spend time with your, yourself daily journaling in it and creating ideas around it. One, one, I know I'm past my 9.30 mark, so I'm going to wrap this up. But one thing I did on that 12-hour walk, it's a tip that I gave. I took one of those little, you know, those little tiny little flip notebooks that are like this big spiral on top. We've all seen them. Um, I stuck it in my pocket as I was walking so that I didn't have a reason to pull out my phone and took a pen and stuck it in there too. And so it was easily accessible. And then each time I broke and took a like rest or had something to eat, I spent time journaling all of the stuff that was in my brain and dumped it out. But one thing I didn't want to do while I was walking is forget some of those thoughts that were popping in my head. So I pulled out that notebook and, and that was in my pocket and wrote some things out. And then I got my bigger notebook out of my backpack when I would stop and I'd take all of my little notes and then really brain dump for like 30 minutes, right? We have to do that sometimes. All the things that are in our brain kind of swirling around, we got a hundred tabs open. That's why I liked that 12 hour walk. I really got to hone into some things that my brain needed because I shut all the tabs and there was only one tab open. It was Jessica's brain. We need to do that more. We talk about physical detoxes. We need mental detoxes sometimes. Um, uh, I want you, like I said, I want you to create a plan on how you can hone in on that skill and work on it daily. So once you figure that out, we need to create a plan on how you can work on it and the things that we can do and you can surround yourself with. I want you to literally make it your obsession, literally make it your obsession, books about it, podcasts about it, training about it, documentaries about it, go to masterminds about it. If you want to be really good at something, Tap into the superpower and then go surround yourself and immerse yourself in exactly where you want to go with it. Mandy Hancock, you've told me for years now, you want to be on stages. You know, you can empower people. Why aren't you doing it? Sis, we need to start putting you in situations. Did she literally just hop off here as soon as I called her name out? The screen just keeps like operating. I know it was probably a total mistake, an accident. <laughs> Maybe she thought that she unmuted an accident. Um, there she is. <laughs> I think that happened last week too. What am I doing to people? I call their name out and they're like signal drops or something. <laughs> uh, I know what she wants, but she's not immersing herself in it yet. So we are going to work on that. Sis is going to start immersing herself in that so she can get really good at it. <laughs> Did I scare you? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I want you to find the one thing that lights up your soul and you feel like time has become irrelevant. You could do it for hours. You could do it for days. You could do it standing on your head and you could impact thousands of lives if you tap into it. That's what we're going to figure out. That's your superpower. Sound like a plan? Everybody ready? Okay. I want to help you with it. So you guys just get in my inbox and let me know how I can help, but go do the work first. Okay. Don't come to me asking me what your superpower is. If you haven't made a, hundred, a list of a hundred qualities about yourself that you like and start honing that list into the things that light your soul on fire. And then let's go from there. Okay. Everybody has it. There ain't nobody exempt from this. Everybody's got superpowers. Let's just go figure out what they are. Okay. Have a great week.